Hey guys, Peanut here, and welcome to Depths of the Crypt. In this video, you will learn all about the crypt and how to play. If you are interested in becoming a member, stick around. After this video, you will receive two in-game books. After you've read those, you'll be ready to face the crypt. So what is Depths of the Crypt? The Crypt is a survival, hand-built dungeon crawler consisting of eight uniquely themed dungeons here on the Black Box server. When you enter the Crypt, you will start at the top and make your way deeper. Depths of the Crypt will be running until there is a winner, and you will run the Crypt many times and you accumulate more and more items to help you on your runs. But be careful, if you die during one of your runs, you will lose everything, and you won't be able to get them back. The items you are primarily hunting are artifacts. There are eight total sets of artifacts, and your goal is to complete each set. An artifact set consists of six artifacts that are of the same theme and are exclusively th found on that theme's dungeon inside of the crypt. For example, layer two of the crypt is the Withering Catacombs, and it is wither themed. Before me are all the Withering Catacombs artifacts. The names of the artifacts are colored to imply their rarity. When you complete an artifact set, make sure to notify me on Discord and I will verify the set for you. While you're waiting for me to verify your set, you can go ahead and place the complete set of artifacts, take them from your artifact storage, and you can go ahead and move them to your player storage. That way, you're saving room in your artifact storage. We'll cover this later, but you will have limited artifact storage. And whenever I verify your set, I'll go ahead and take them from your player storage, and I'll turn one of your lamps on. The first time you complete an artifact set, you will have the most common artifact on the lamp, and that artifact will get upgraded each time you complete the set, up to six total times where you have mastered that set. And this board is something that players can see, so you can observe who has completed what set and how far the, along they are. The game will come to an end once someone has completed all eight sets six times, and they will be the champion. When you become a member of the Crypt, you will receive this Crypt membership, which is your member key. This is how you get in and out of the lobby and are able to play the game, so make sure not to lose this. Outside of the Crypt door, we have an Ender Chest, which you can safely keep your Crypt membership. That's what I recommend. That way, whenever you come here, you can just easily access it, use it, and it'll start to open the door. If this is your first time, then you'll want to select a player station. This is the first floor of the lobby, so all the player stations are full. So let's go up to the second floor. As you can see, each end of the lobby has some rooms that you can use to get upstairs. And let's look for a vacant one. It looks like all of these are vacant, and you can tell that they're vacant because there is not a soul lantern hanging in front of them. So we'll go ahead and grab a soul lantern and we'll just pick this one right here. We can claim it, and then you would normally put your player head right here. Once you've claimed your player station, you'll see that there's a black shulker here for you, and it is named Crypt Power Up Box. Inside will be some crypt keys, along with a couple other game items to help you along the way. Each player station is equipped with an ender chest, a couple chests for your game items, and the artifact storage. The storage inside this barrel is limited, and you must store all and any of your artifacts inside this barrel. You cannot hold on to ex extra artifacts for any reason, even if only for a little while. If you can't fit an artifact inside your barrel, you'll have to go and take it to the artifact exchange, which we'll cover later. You'll also get a red shulker named Crypt Box, and this will help you store game-related items at your leisure. Hunt down as many artifacts as you can throughout the crypt, along with other important items like crypt coins, phantom membranes, and others. 
search barrels, chests, interact with doors, trap doors, buttons, but be careful. The more you interact with the dungeon, the more dangerous it will become. As you interact with the crypt, you may disrupt one of the tombs. The tombs are where the undead are buried. They are hidden in the wall and are either gilded with gold or have a tomb banner on them. Disrupting a tomb means it will release a monster at you, so be careful. Also, after 15 minutes inside of the crypt, each crypt will release a sorcerer at you. Now remember, if you die in the crypt, you lose everything you had on you. So watch the clock. Next, let's go over candles. Candles are power-ups that help you customize the crypt to your advantage. There are currently six candles available in the game. There's Artifact Hunter, Loot Finder, Dungeon Diet, Stealth, Evasion, and Illumination. Each of these has higher levels with increasing benefit, but we'll get into more of this in a few minutes. In order to obtain power-ups, you must first discover a power-up token room. You have around a 50% chance of obtaining a power-up chamber token from each room per run. There is a power-up token room in the Withering Catacombs, the Aether's Pass, and the Gloom Crypt. If you are lucky enough to get a power-up chamber token, you must find a power-up chamber, which I have before me. Once you have discovered one and you have your power-up chamber token on you, put the token in the barrel and the door will open for you and you can go get your power-up crystal. If you make it out alive with your power-up crystal, you can submit it at the power-up crystal station, which is located in the Crypt Keepers Exchange. Now, there is some unexplained information there, so let's go over it. Before me is the Crypt Keepers Exchange, also known as the shop area. It is located at the end of the hall in the lobby, specifically on the first floor. This is a shop area. It consists of the shop and the market, and you can see the items available to buy in the item frames and their prices directly above. The difference being the shop always has everything in stock but the market only has one of each item available to buy. And you can tell if something is in stock, if that lamp is turned on or off. And these item frames will probably be invisible soon, so it'll be easier to tell if something is in stock or not. Now, if you wanna buy something, simply have your payment ready. And if we're at the shop, put the full payment in the dropper. It'll take a second, but your item will fall below you. And you just heard that note block ding, Wait for that ding before you make multiple purchases, okay? And a good rule of thumb with this, with this whole Crypt Keepers exchange area, make one purchase at a time. Purchase slash, uh, you know, interaction at a time, just so you don't mess up the redstone. Same thing over here. I want to buy this chamber token. So I'm just gonna put my, pull, my full payment in here, and my item will fall before me. And it's just that easy. Now across from the shop are a few useful features. As previously mentioned, there is the artifact exchange where you should take all of your extra artifacts and exchange them for a chance at a phantom membrane or you'll certainly get a crypt coin. Next to the artifact exchange is the first candle upgrader. You can submit any three level one candles and press a button and you'll get a random level two candle. Took a moment, but there we go. And we got a level two artifact hunter. Now to the right is a level three. Same thing, any three level two candles, click the button and it'll take a moment, but you will get a level three candle of random. And it turned out to be artifact hunter again. I promise it's random, but it doesn't seem like it does it. On the other side of this room is the dragon egg retrieval. If you ever get your hands on a dragon egg, place it here and click the button and you'll get a special prize. Before me is the universal token exchange. This is where you'll take any token besides the power up chamber one. But other than that, any token you'll place in here one at a time and you'll get the corresponding item. 
This lamp is purely decoration. Now, across from the Universal Token Exchange is the Compass Shop. This is where you can buy your artifact compasses. Before you buy one, make sure that the arrow is pointing towards the layer that you want to get a compass for. You see you can either choose between layers 1 through 4 or layers 5 through 8. Once you have that set, you can grab 7 of your hard-earned phantom membranes and plop them in there, and you'll get a semi-random compass. This lamp is functional, so if either of these is ever off, you know that it is completely out of stock for compasses for that range of layers. Now, I'll show you what one of these compasses look like. We have it set through layers one through four. And in a second, we'll get our compass and you'll see which one we get. All right, let's see. The Withering Catacombs, layer two. You can obtain the three common artifacts inside the layer's artifact room, but getting the rare artifacts means using your artifact token. Here we are in the Withering Catacombs and our compass is pointing this way. Once you find the right spot, Drop your compass on the ground, and it'll dispense your artifact token for the correct layer. If you have multiples of an artifact, you can trade two artifacts for the next rare artifact. But keep in mind, you cannot trade from a common artifact to a rare. So in this case, I could not trade two Roses of Decay for a Wither Skeleton Scroll. But I can do two Withering Hearts for a Rose. I can also do a Wither Skeleton Skull. I can do two of those for a Wither Set. Just can't bridge between common and rare. Now I will guide you on how to play the game. First, at your player station, empty all non-crypt items into your storage or your ender chest. Don't forget your armor and Elytra. And if you happen to have a totem in your offhand or anything like that. Now you can grab a crypt key, your power-up box, and any crypt items that you're okay with potentially losing. Your crypt key membership should stay in your ender chest, but your crypt key is what you'll need to open the game. Some examples of items you might want to bring include food, artifact compasses like we mentioned earlier, and something like a teleportation orb. Make sure all mods are disabled. In the top left of my screen, you can see my mini map. Just simply disable that, it's super easy. Disable any other mods, and you also want to go into your video settings and turn down your brightness to 50 or default. I'm gonna keep it up for just the sake of the video. Remember, this experience is supposed to be pure vanilla and adventure mode. The exception to this is using dynamic lights. That can stay on. And in fact, that will be useful in the game. You'll also want to make sure to turn off subtitles. Once you double check that your mods are off, your settings are at the required state, and items are put away including armor, elytra, totem, and anything else like that, you're ready to play the game. Go up to the ready room entrance with at least your crypt key and your power up box. If the lamp is off, that means that the game is open. But if it's on, that means the game is currently being run, and you'll have to wait to play. If you're waiting to play, there is a number one queue and a number two queue. This is the official way to claim a spot in line. But be warned, crypt runs can take a long time. The timer for the sorcerers, aka evokers, is 15 minutes, but runs could last longer than that. As you can see here, the lamp is off for us, so that means that we can go ahead and play. We'll submit our crypt key inside here, it'll accept it, and the door will open. One thing to mention is that if the lamp is off, but the game is not accepting your key, that means it is currently resetting. So you'll just have to wait less than five minutes and it'll be ready for you. Once you're inside the ready room, make sure not to leave until you have done your crypt run. Remember, redstone is sensitive. Now, once you enter, you'll see that there is a saturation stew ready for you. Eat this immediately. This will make sure your saturation is all the way full. 
And you can put the barrel in here if you'd like. You could also save them if you want. They could be useful. Make sure to set your spawn and put it away any items into your ender chest or one of the barrels over here. There are also signs to remind you of certain things to check. And if you happen to forget your crypt power up box, there is a loaner here that you can use because you will need to load a power up box. If you happen to use the loaner, just make sure to put it back. Now that we're all ready to go, we can continue. We'll put our power up box on the amethyst, just aim on it. And if you place it on the amethyst, as you can see, you can still open it. That way you can alter the power ups you have. When the ready room door opens, make sure you get in quick. You'll have about 20 seconds to get inside. Once it closes, you can't open it until you finish your run. Let me reinforce this by saying, do not click that warp button until you've done your run. If you have any dungeon discs, you can load one up here in this jukebox. You can only load one up per run, and you probably won't have one for a long time. Once everything is ready, you can go ahead and click Game Start. The chamber will close, and we'll be able to go inside. This here is the trap door, and it'll open for you as you approach it. And you're going to go ahead and jump down into the crypt. You'll take a little bit of damage, and that is on purpose. Once you're ready to leave the game, you have two options. Search for a cluster of amethyst. This is the starlight fountain that takes you deeper to the next crypt. Or you can find a copper room. Your other option is to find a copper room. This is the exit from the game. You go up the stream and you'll be returned to the ready room. The first layer does not have a copper room exit, only the amethyst fountain. But layers 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8 all have the copper room exits. As I mentioned, when you exit the game, you will be taken back to the ready room. You will pass over the trap door that is the crypt entrance, and it can open for you. If you wish, you can go back in, but I wouldn't recommend it. Once you've made it back to the ready room, make sure to click end game and your power box will appear. Make sure to wait for all your items to return to your power box. If you hear a dispenser clicking, that means it's still working. Once you have picked up your power up box, you can grab that and all it other items that you had in here, and then you can go ahead and leave the ready room. Once you leave the ready room, on your left you will see a bed. Make sure to set your spawn there immediately. Don't wait until you get to your base or something. If you forget and you happen to respawn in the ready room, that could cause issues for other players playing the game. After a game ends, a 5 minute timer will start. After the 5 minutes, the game will open back up and be ready to play more. The candle power ups, as I mentioned before, are Artifact Hunter, Loot Finder, Dungeon Diet, Stealth, Evasion, and Illumination. Illumination will be a lovely candle to bring with you on your run. As you know, the dungeon is very dark, which can be dangerous for the sneaky crypt crawler you are. The Illumination Candle will turn on lights throughout the game. The max level for lights is 3 levels. Next we have Loot Finder. Loot Finder helps increase your chances of finding loot in barrels. Artifact Hunter is similar, but for artifact barrels, found in the artifact rooms. As you know, artifacts are your prime item that you're looking for. But there is also one artifact barrel per crypt, so it's up to you which power-ups you bring. Next is Dungeon Diet. This candle provides the chance of you getting delicious food when you enter the crypt. Take advantage of the food you get from this, you'll need it. The more levels you use, the higher chances you have for getting better food, and possibly multiple pieces. Any items you obtain from power-ups will appear here and be waiting for you as you enter the crypt. Stealth is an amazing candle to bring with you. Each level of stealth adds one stealth token to each tomb. When a tomb is successfully triggered to open, it will use a stealth token instead of opening. The max level of stealth is 10 levels. 
Lastly, we have evasion. As you wander throughout the crypts, you may find yourself getting cornered by the undead that dwell. This power-up gives you a 50% chance to get a teleportation orb, and a 33% chance to get a potion of slowness. These items can help a ton when you're in a sticky situation. And if you make it out alive, you get to keep them for your future runs. These items will also appear on the hay at the bottom of the crypt entrance. Each candle can be level 1, 2, or 3. Their effects are additive, so if you bring two level 1 loot finders, that's just as good as having one level 2. Three level 1s equals level 3, of course. So even if you have multiple of the same level of a certain candle, it's definitely worth bringing. When you load your power-up box into the game, it will only accept the first six candles on your run. So make sure you organize which candles you want to be used on your run. When hunting artifacts throughout the crypts, you'll want to search for the artifact room on each layer. The artifact rooms are always closed, but can be opened by their crimson button. Both the artifact room and their crimson button are marked by the artifact's mini block that you can see before you. The credits for this mini block will be in the description. Once you have located and pressed the artifact button, the artifact room will open and you might find some artifacts or phantom membranes. The last thing I want to mention are some rules. These are very important for you to know because by playing the game, you are acknowledging that you know how to work the crypt and you know the rules and mistreatment of either will not be happy fun time. The rules will be put in the description and I'll also read them off quickly. The first rule is do not left click. You'll never need to do this in the crypt. Imagine yourself in adventure mode. You could play the whole crypt without having your finger on the left trigger. Second, if you somehow break something or hurt something, tell me. This shouldn't happen, but if it does, I need to know so that I can fix it. Third, do not place anything in the crypt. You can in the ready room and the lobby, of course, but don't in the crypt. And also, don't fight in the lobby. Number four, do not share your crypt membership with anyone. Fifth, the game is first come, first serve. If someone is waiting to play the crypt, you will have to wait before them. Number six, do not bring any unauthorized items into the crypt. The items you can bring with you should be obvious. You would have gotten them from the crypt in some way. Also, you can search for the little crypt symbols. That should help. Do not place items into barrels, chests, or any other container in the crypt. This could break things. Number eight, take off all armor, totems, your elytra, so on, and make sure your settings are set accordingly. Also turn off mods. If you accidentally bring unauthorized valuable items into the game, like netherite gear for example, you can put it in a container, preferably a chest. Do this ASAP and then tell me where the container is. Making sure your settings are correct means your mods are off, no F3, no subtitles, no unfair texture pack or shaders, brightness is at 50, the game is supposed to be dark. I understand that some people might play on laptops or have a lot of glare, so accommodations can be made for that. Number 10, please do not break my game. It has taken uh, a really, really long time to make this game. Like, a long time. Lots of effort has gone into, into this, and a lot of my personal free time. It has been an extremely hard project, so even as a joke, please do not mess with anything. That also means don't uh, take advantage of unfair exploits, that kind of deal. Number 11, if you discover any exploits, please inform me about them and don't take advantage of them. I'll let you know if you can utilize it or not. Number 12, the game is a stealth-based dungeon crawler. You will not be fighting, breaking, placing, anything like that. As I said, consider yourself in adventure mode. Rules for the waiting queue are as follows. If you are in the number one spot, you are next in line to play the game. When the current player leaves the crypt, it is courteous of them to message the number one queued player that the game will be open for them in five minutes. If you are the number two queued player, and you notice that the lamp is off slash the game is open, yet there is a player ahead of you waiting in the queue, you should message them on Discord 
and in Minecraft, and wait a minute. If they don't respond, you can play ahead of them. But remember, just because the lamp is off doesn't mean it'll accept a key right away. So give them a little time. Note, if you are taking up a queue spot, it is your responsibility to be ready to play when you can and not keep others waiting longer than necessary. The last thing I'll mention is just remember, you're playing a game with friends. We're supposed to have fun. I believe I've covered everything. There will be a mountain encasing the game, but the game will still be open while that's being built. As I said, if you want to play the game, you must watch this video, which you've done, and you'll also need to read the crypt book and the step-by-step -step guide. Once you've done all of this, you can message me on Discord and you'll be ready to play the crypt. Good luck and try not to die.